If you're a new or inspiring business owner, this is the podcast you've been waiting to hear. This is the Chamber of Commerce show. We'll help you, the new business owner, grow your business. And we'll help you, the inspiring business owner, learn from others. This isn't about theory. It's about what works and what doesn't. You've listened to the inspirational and motivational podcasts, but this isn't like other shows. Some of us get tired of listening to the fluff on how millionaires became millionaires. What we want to know is what experiences shaped these individuals and how they manage issues that come their way. Now, it's time for you to roll up your sleeves and get to work. Here are your hosts, Chris Luna and Tommy Hernandez. Welcome to the very first Chamber of Commerce show. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, my name is Tommy Hernandez, I'm Business Development Manager at Sealed Air Corporation. And I'm Chris Luna, CFO with BeingAtTheDistrict.com. First of all, I would like to thank Revel Systems for being our sponsor for today's show. If you're in need of a POS system, feel free to visit www.revelambassador.com. Our goal for the Chamber of Commerce show is to highlight businesses and really promote the benefit of joining your local Chamber of Commerce. Um, at the end of the day, we just want to uh, learn about what it really takes to run a business. And uh, at the end of the day, if, if you are uh, interested in, in being a part of these businesses, by all means, uh, it definitely just gives an opportunity for, for you to connect with uh, you know, business owners. So during the show, feel free to connect with us. Uh, feel free to leave, leave a comment, ask any questions during the live stream, and we'd be happy to answer them as soon as possible. Yeah, so today in this episode, we want to introduce Moises Hernandez uh, from Lewis Butcher Shop. He's uh, not related to you, right? Correct. Not related. <laughs> not related. Not related. Um, uh, and here representing the Downey Chamber of Commerce is Ambassador Daniel Andrade. Uh, so thanks again for being here with us, guys. I really appreciate it, especially with this first show. We're all nervous. I'm sweating. I'm a little stressed <laughs> out. Had a long day. Had two glasses of wine. That's all right. So, <laughs> so uh, thanks for getting, uh, you know, a Friday night, 7 p.m., how to beat the traffic and be here with us today. So honestly, thank you guys. Um, so first of all, what we want to do is we want to show a small glimpse of your business um, because that's who we're highlighting today. We're highlighting your business. So let's go ahead and roll that tape. right now so I'm supposed to eat every two hours and that's a bad mistake but it looks really good thank you so much for sharing that and uh, just definitely share share with us a little bit our audience you know a little bit about your uh, company you know all the details you know definitely uh, share your experiences with us please so what at what point was a business transferred over to you officially I, sh I guess I should say well uh, after I got out of the Marines uh, I decided I want to give the business a shot mm. um, so, it, it was one of those things where I was working with family, but I wasn't sure if I wanted to take over it because, you know, uh, it's, it's a, it was a Mexican company city. Yeah. And mm -hmm. for me, whenever you're going to take over something, you have to do it your way. Right. So, I left for New York. Oh, I left wow. for New York. Uh, I spent about four months out there, learned how to craft butcher. Wow. Uh, we got to go out to farms and slaughter animals. Wow. And I, I learned how to process everything from head to toe. Okay. And uh, I brought that back, um, which I think is uh, essentially what sets me apart from everyone else. 
-hmm. is that you know I'm essentially that old school butcher that still uh, preserves. That's, that's that awesome. Yeah. It's a that's rarity. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. I, I thought it would have been the opposite because a lot of I'm second generation business owner as well. Parents had their business, and uh, there's six of us in the business, and I was the youngest one. But I know there's certain family members they didn't they got tired of it. You know, so yeah. a lot of people just got out and <laughs> did their own thing, and they didn't want the business, or you know. Uh, so I'm surprised that you actually went the extra step. That means that you like doing what you did, you know. I like doing it my way. <laughs> That's good. That's what <laughs> and did you get some like when you when you got the company? Obviously, from your father, did you get some uh, hesitancy from him as far as once you took it over, you kind of changed it to do it your way? Um, I got it from everyone. Every, the yeah, whole family. Uh, the whole family, customers, uh, it's never easy with change. Yeah, yeah. Especially with a business that's been established for a long time. Mm -hmm. And I think as a business owner, that's the one thing I underestimated, mm -hmm. is the fact that how, how, how difficult change can be for some people. That location that I visited, it, you said 26 years there, yeah. right? So how long have you been officially taken over the, the business? Four Four years. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. So it's it's. Did they fully retire? Or are they still no, back no. there telling you? No. <laughs> Stopping no, by. Tried to retire, but uh, then and he moved to Utah for a while. Oh. Wow. But then he uh, said, "I can't do this." Came back, opened up a shop in Bellflower. Oh, Ooh, so competitor. You got to <laughs> <laughs> You're like, why, Dad? Why, why are you gonna do that? Why are you gonna do that to me? And then my mom. Uh, no, she's still with me. No way. Yeah, you can't get these people. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so how are uh, family Thanksgiving? Is it is it good? No, or? no we don't do rivalry. <laughs> we we try and set all that aside. That's um, good. That's good. No, it's a it's a good dynamic. Um, I I came from a working family, and that's, that's how it has to be. You know, one of the things that you brought up is when we're thinking of meat, we're thinking of waste. You know, so I know when you buy your product, you have to forecast. You know. A big event for this weekend. It's Mexican Independence Day. We do really well. I'm sure you guys do pretty yes. well for this weekend. So I know sometimes you can overbuy my product. It doesn't go bad. You know, it has a year expiration date or longer. But your product, if you don't sell a certain amount of time, I'm sure you know there's waste there. How do you forecast that? Well, uh, a lot of experience. Mm -hmm. It's more than anything uh, keeping track of records. Okay. Um, you know. Uh, for a while, we did the old school thing where we wrote everything down mm -hmm. and yeah. went back a year later to see how we did the last year. Yeah. Uh, but now everything, uh, you know, obviously a little bit more modern. We've moved into digital. Okay. That helps a lot. Yeah. So, you know, we can look at that and then we'll see, well, the past couple months, we've, you know, sales have been up or down. So if they're up, we'll compensate a little bit more. We'll say, all right, we'll get a little extra. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and obviously if they've been low, then it's like, okay, we can expect to have either about the same or less this year. Okay, okay. And it's, uh, it's worked out for us pretty good, but it's a lot of trial and error. Yeah. And so, like, going into that, that modernization of the company, I know kind of going back to when you talked about, you know, changing it and doing your way, what, what are the top three things that you did to change it into your company? I think uh, top three or five, I guess. Uh, top three, I would say, first, uh, quality. Okay. Unfortunately, um, for those of us who grew up Latino and working class families, uh, the quality of food wasn't always uh, uh, important. Right. So we grew up eating a lot of cheap meat, uh, a lot of, you know, yeah, crap meat, to yeah. be honest. Yeah. So what I did was I started working with an Angus program. I started sure. working with the higher grades of meat. Okay. Um, that's the first part. The second part was trying to educate people. Mm -hmm. Because most people really mm -hmm. don't know what it comes uh, to cooking or meat. Uh, they base everything off of like what other people say, um, and, and I get it, you know, each, to each their own, yeah. but in educating people, you open them up to many more possibilities, yeah. and that in turn as a business owner helps me because I'm willing to buy and try different things. Right. And I think the last thing uh, I changed um, will probably have to be uh, communication. I made it a point... Uh, for us as a company to communicate better between um, the employees, management, and management, and the supervisors. Okay. Before it was just, you know, my parents saying, do this, do that, do that, yeah. you know, and, it, and it, it can't be that way. So how many people do you have on your team when you're, I mean, now, now how big is your team now? Uh, I have 11 employees. Okay. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's a lot of employees. Yeah. yeah. For one so shop. Yeah, yeah. Do you deal with the 
payroll yourself, or do you have no. some an admin in the office, or? So I hired a bookkeeper for my office, okay. and I hired a, uh, a tax company for everything else. Okay, good. Okay. Yeah. So the bookkeeper helps you with collecting everyone's hours, submitting them, doing all the taxes and all that. Yes. Yes. Yeah. One of the things in business you don't screw up, and you don't mess with, and you don't wing. Yeah. 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 yeah you don't wing HR. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know. I, we. We. I had the mistake where I brought our HR in house, and we messed up. We had to pay a lot of penalties. The guy that was in the office didn't really know what he was doing, and then oh. I ended up just going back to. I think we went back to paychecks. But yeah, I. I, I know it's a lot of work. Going back to that procurement. Right. Um. Now that your dad's close by. Do you guys buy together to try to keep your cost low? Because I know, you know, maybe if you buy over a certain amount. That's a good question. I think. It, it is. Uh, I push I push a lot for quality. So it's one of those things where, um, you know, my dad still has his ideas about how things should be done traditionally. And so he hasn't bought into your way of doing things? No. no. Okay. No. Wow. <laughs> Not surprised, so I guess, the dad. I'm already, yeah. getting, I'm already getting questions on, um, I don't know where, I think YouTube. They're all coming into one feed, but uh, one guy says, I know that guy. Uh, the other one <laughs> says, do they cater? Do you guys cater? Uh, yes, we do cater. Um, one of the things we've gotten popular with is... Uh, so yeah, actually, one guy said, I can't hear you, Moses. Speak oh, up. All right, all right, all right. That was Alfredo. So I don't know. Oh, yeah, you know Alfredo. <laughs> yeah, that's my dad. That's my dad. He's, a, he's yelling at me. <laughs> <laughs> he's, uh, he's actually my social media guy. Oh, there, oh, okay. oh, there you go. Your dad got to listen to Of course, he would crack the whip. Like, hey, do a yeah. better job. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess uh, because the more locations you have, have you guys thought about buying together or do you guys keep everything separate? We keep it separate just because, um, yeah, he doesn't believe in the quality that I do, mm. uh, and, and I'm a stickler for that. Mm. Um, I, if I am not willing to eat it, I'm not going to feed it to someone else. Oh, that's awesome. That's, that's my oh. biggest thing. That's awesome. And so when you talked about communicating to your consumer base, you know, relaying the quality to them, like, what it, like that's got to be so hard because you have to get them in front of you or to at least listen to you. How did, how did you manage to do that? Um, you know, I used to believe that when I first started. Um, but I, what I figured out is that people are pretty perceptive if you're willing to say something smart. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like I'll have people and they'll come to the meat case, right? And I can tell they're looking and I can tell they want something, but they don't know what. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them, it's just the younger generation. They just don't know how to yeah, cook. Right. So I'll throw something out there for them. And if they come back at me with uh, something that tells me they're interested, then I'll talk. Okay. Uh, it's kind of like fishing, you know? Yeah. Uh, so I'll talk and I'll, I'll give them pointers and, and you can tell their interests start to peak. Mm -hmm. And it's a good thing to see because we should be cooking more at home. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Yeah. And then have you, I mean, I feel like lately within the last couple of years, the, the barbecuing, the, the investment into cooking like really good meat has, has risen a little bit. I mean, yes. have you seen a peak in business because of that? Um, with the green eggs and everybody has to have their, <laughs> their really good grills and oh, their absolutely. smokers and everything. Uh, yeah. That's me. Yeah, <laughs> I, bought, I bought the Traeger. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all my friends good, make fun of me. They're no, like, that's a good investment, man. Is that? That's, that's a good investment. <laughs> all I got to do is literally turn off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So one of the things we started to notice in the meat industry is the detachment from your traditional steakhouses. Yeah. So you have a lot of these steakhouses that used to be great when we were young, but as the consumer uh, grew as far as like their knowledge base, mm -hmm. they started to see, wow, they're charging me like, 50 bucks for prime rib when it's actually a lower grade of meat. Right. So most people, uh, including me, it just it doesn't make sense to go to these steakhouses. So right. I would rather go to a butcher shop, yeah. learn how to cook it myself, and I know that I'm actually getting quality product. Sure. But um, with that said, uh, nothing against the higher end steakhouses because mm -hmm. those places, oof, oh, yeah. you'll be amazed as to what these people do, man. I, I got to ask, uh, who's your favorite? Who's... Uh, and all yeah, I know you know me. <laughs> <laughs> as far as like my favorite like your steak, favorite steakhouse, steakhouse. Your favorite steakhouse. steakhouse. <sighs> I don't know. I've had a few, but if I had to pick one, uh, Lock and Key and Downey. Absolutely. Oh, really? yeah, oh, and Key right. yeah, they make a good dry age ribeye. Right? Really? Yeah. Okay. And they're talking about pretty legit. Yeah. Too. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That says a lot. Yeah, mm -hmm. they do a really good so job. I'm pretty sure you know your meats. Those so. guys hustle, man. <laughs> in, the, in regards to the quality, too, I feel like, uh, you know, coming from a sales background, I'm always interested in, you know, the, the 
I guess essentially the cost as well, but in regards to competing against big box stores like Costco, I mean, everybody's always at Costco, but not everybody can afford to buy a month, a month of meat and freeze it. Um, I mean, have you seen a, a differentiation between a big box store like Costco that you're competing against? Good question. Well, uh, I used to think that they would be an issue for me as far as the competition, but what I came to understand was that, like you just said, and you, you, uh, you made the main point of why I, my, my business has managed to survive even though I got Costco literally down the street. Okay, okay. Is because people sometimes just want to have a quiet dinner with someone and I just want to get two steaks. <laughs> you know, they don't want to go out and buy the whole pack. Right. Um, and it's one of those things where... Uh, the, you know, the service is a little bit more uh, personal because mm -hmm. they're actually talking to someone. They can say, you know, I want it. You know, my, my favorite way to get people to choose the thickness of their steak is one finger or two fingers, three fingers. You know, it's the easiest way because okay. if you start talking inches, people get lost. Yeah. yeah. But, but you, you give them that kind of service and they say, okay, this is worth it. This is worth paying a little extra or, or whatever the case is. Okay. So one of the things about the show is if I'm someone and I'm, you mentioned you came out of the Marines. Right? Yeah. Okay, I just came out of the military, for example, and I'm thinking about opening up a business, and I had this wild idea of opening up a meat shop. What does it really take to open something like that? Asking for help. Who do you That's ask? That's all you got to do. Who do you ask, though? You don't have a dad. I don't have a dad like yours. So, the one thing that helped me to actually start and get moving on this was I joined the Small Business Development Center. They have a uh, kind of like a boot camp for vets. Mm -hmm. oh. uh, they get you in there. They right. give you classes on how to do social media. They give you classes on how to like work uh, numbers, accounting, uh, everything you need. Like they give you like a basic foundation. What's the name for that organization? Uh, it's the Small Business Development Center. Mm -hmm. Our nearest office is in uh, LBCC, mm -hmm. just down the street off Clark. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And you found out about that just by researching or just the Marines... Kind of let you know a little bit? No, uh, the military does a terrible job of telling you what your <laughs> benefits are when you get out. Uh, no, it's just, uh, the way I found out was, uh, I want to say it's just a veteran network. Mm -hmm. It was just a veteran network. Um, and the Small Business Development Center is actually an offshoot of uh, Small Business Administration. Okay. So it is a government program. Okay. Um, so I went there, they gave me all these classes, and uh, they even gave my wife some classes, too. Okay. You know, she got to learn a lot about that. And she work with, she work with you as well? Is she uh, part of the No, business? she... <laughs> <laughs> I ain't getting involved in No, she got enough of me. Okay, good, good. And then the cool thing about working with a, um, the Small Business Development Center is once I went through this program, they assigned me uh, like a kind of like a mentor. So he, I was able to call him, ask him questions, and they helped me with finance. Oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's, I mean, that's an awesome resource to have. I don't think a lot of people think that there's really organizations that help mm -hmm. guide you like that. But I know there's a lot. It's just we don't really know about them. So we'll definitely get the link from this organization. Yes. Because um, we just had the first person in our immediate family go to the Marines, my nephew. It was uh, you know, scary. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was a scary transition for all of us. It is. You know, it's. We've had extended family be part of the military, but there's someone that's close to you. You know what I mean? You definitely see things differently now. Yes. Yeah. So uh, thanks for definitely your service on no, that. Definitely. Thank, thank, you. thank you so much. Um, so if I'm opening up that butcher shop, okay, I know I'm. I don't want to. I don't want you to give out your trade secrets, no. but they're going to help you open up a business, right? Any business. They don't specialize in meat, right? So what is one of the biggest hurdles in having a meat shop like yours? I mean, just one I could think of off the top of my head is public health. I know it's always a difficulty. You know, so what, is, what does it take to open up a meat shop, a butcher shop? Well, um, public health is definitely a, a big one. It, it's a big one. Um, but the one thing I've come to understand with public health is if you're just nice to them, mm -hmm and you do what they tell you to do, you're not going to have any problems. Yeah. You know, you have these guys, they come in, and they tell me all their horror stories, by the way. <laughs> I can imagine. Um, and they see that I'm nice to them, and, and I always tell them, if you need me to move something out of the way, just tell me, and I'll do it for you. Mm -hmm. And I'm always behind them with pencil and paper, like, what's wrong? We'll fix it, you know? Yeah. So they see that, and um, they don't, it, it's not like, 
like you, you automatically race that barrier yeah. because a lot of the times they come from another place where things have just gone terribly wrong or they get insulted or whatever the case is so they're ready for a fight <laughs> they're ready <laughs> they're for a fight Johnny. yeah so once they see that it's like oh okay yeah. so we take our time no one's stressed out and i always come out on top so yeah, nice. um yeah, I- but the second hurdle Oh, fortunately, that uh, I've come to understand that's just part of the business is uh, dishonesty, people stealing. Really? Employees, you know, they're, they're going to be employees and do what they got to do. And So, I mean, wow. obviously mm-hmm. not everyone has yeah. access to cash or their cash register, but I'm assuming they're stealing product. It happens. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So you, you see that shortage or like, and I know the same thing goes with us. I literally just bought a pallet of X. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to it? Yeah. You know, and, and it happens, but I think one of the best things is making sure you have systems in place that is able to cash those things sooner rather than later. Yep. Like, uh, we just implemented a system this year, too, and before we would do inventory once a year, now we're doing it weekly. Yeah. You know, we're, we're, mm-hmm. we're catching things weekly. So That's if we know something's off, I mean, we're saying, why is this negative? You know, mm-hmm. so I... I I know it's difficult with you though, because you're actually weighing the product. It's it's not just how many cans of Coke we have. Yep. Yeah. Well, awesome. Yeah. Well, if you mind, if you don't mind me asking, like as part of the business, I I just you know obviously research on your company. Like you guys have the deli as well. What part of a, how much of your business is the deli? Uh, does that create you know more hurdles? Um, and then I guess was that a part of the business with your father as well, or is that well, something he has a big you added? Menu. Yeah, he has a, a huge menu. Event. Yeah. <laughs> well. One of the best things, or, or one of the things I learned when I went to New York, um, is it's always beneficial for a, a butcher shop to have a kitchen. Mm-hmm. Why? Because there's a lot of stuff that, like you said, I have a slow, uh, a short shelf life mm-hmm. on this product. Right. Um, uh, so, you know, uh, of course, I sell tacos, I do brisket, I do a lot of things that help me to move my inventory more. That's smart. So that's that's a smart business more than anything. Yeah. Is to have you gotten into the Uber Eats and all that? We have stuff. actually. Oh, that's that always help? a boost. That it's a big boost. Yeah, that's yeah. impressive. Yeah, I've been to a place where they have like ten iPads, different mm-hmm. tablets. Yeah. Do you, is that your setup too? No. Or not yet? <laughs> <laughs> in Downey, it seems like the only delivery companies that have made a good uh, footprint is Postmates and Uber. Mm. Okay. okay. We had DoorDash for a while, but they just they don't have the following out there yet. Not yet. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. I know with the, the, the company that's sponsoring us, Revel, they have this POS system where all those orders, instead of having 10 of those iPads, all those orders come into one screen. Really? Yeah, uh-huh. so if you're, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an API basically, so what it does is it gets all of them from all of those companies, literally, the Grubhub, I'm not going to name them all, but Uber Eats, yeah. most, all of those, and it all comes into that same POS well, system. Interesting. Yeah, so. I'll I might bug you about that. <laughs> <laughs> definitely take a look at it. Yeah. But uh, we're going to move along with the chamber a little bit. We definitely. also have a rep with the chamber and yeah. ambassador. Uh, but before we go um, and focus more with the Downey Chamber Commerce, I just want to thank you guys also sure. for bringing him involved. Yes, thank you so uh, much. Being involved in the show, you guys, we have a few shows coming up that in, involve the Downey Chamber Commerce. So one of the things that we definitely want to highlight is the benefits in being involved in the chamber. There's a lot of business owners, realistically, uh, people my age, they don't even know what a chamber of commerce is. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's nice to have that partner sitting next to you and kind of having someone you can bounce ideas off of. And um, I'm sure they're a big help, too. So uh, we'll definitely, we're going to bring a director uh, that sits on the board yes. uh, uh-huh. with us. His name is Michael. We're going to bring him into the show. But before we bring him in, we're just going to do a quick um, commercial, a quick break. Yeah. And uh, we'll come back with you guys with the Downey. Thanks again. Thank you guys. Sounds good. The flavors and the aroma of Mediterranean food is something different and it's exotic. It transports you into a different world. So here at Saj, customers love the food and the experience. People nowadays eat differently than they used to. They want healthy, fresh, quick, customizable, fast. With Revel, we're able to actually move the line as fast as we need to. We touch anywhere between 1,000 to 2,000 people a day, so speed is extremely important. The best part about Revel for us, it's the tools that you guys provide. One of the features we're using right now is forecasting labor. It puts us at an advantage to have the right analytics and the right data in our hands to make wise business decisions. The cool thing is the offline mode works and we're still able to generate all the data 
there's a substantial amount of money at lost if we don't have that feature. At Saj, we implemented the online ordering through Revel so that the orders could pop up on the POS in real time and we're aware of them right away. In terms of transaction, in terms of credit card, in terms of everything, we don't have to rely on an outsource for that. We're built to scale. When we first opened Saj, we had one location and one food truck. Right now, we're in three different locations and we have two food trucks. Once you set it up once, you could replicate it in different locations. When there is a change, you just change it once and you just upload it to all the different stores at the same time. It allows us to have consistency, which is extremely important in our business. It's a great privilege to, to actually run a business like this and be a business owner. We definitely recommend Revel for other businesses. Fuerte el aplauso para ella! We sell tens of thousands of pinatas a year for every occasion. My name is Chris Luna. I'm the CFO for Raquel's Candy and Confections in the Pinata District. So we manufacture a lot of the pinatas here in downtown LA. Everything is handmade. It's anything that you can think of, we can make. So the pinata making process is very unique. Because they have to be very strong to withhold various hits and we sell it to our main store that's here off Olympic. Our business for Cal's has been around since the 80s. Um, my parents were you know the first to import a lot of this traditional Hispanic product. They actually retired about 18 years ago and that's when three brothers took over the business. We are a new generation adapting to this industry. We saw that Piñatas are unique. We're just trying to look at something that not everyone does and something that not everyone can do. And uh, that's kind of why we focus a lot more on the piñatas. There is a uh, certain trade secrets to it that we've improved our process over the years. You know, we're millennials ourselves, so we're very technology driven. We're trying to see what items, what technology, what machines we can use to improve this process. We actually manage the Pinata District, which is two or three blocks here in downtown LA that sells nothing but Pinatas. The Pinatas has been trending for the last, um, I would say, six to ten years. You have different cultures that want that in their parties. When you go shopping at our business, it's like you're already at a party. With Revel Systems, we've saved over a thousand dollars a month because we have the flexibility to choose any sort of payment processor. We've been working with Revel Systems for over six months now and we couldn't be happier. On Valentine's Day, we serve upwards of 600 people and with our old POS system, it just wasn't cutting it. But with the new Revel System, we increased sales by 20% the next year. It's a beautiful, sleek design, and it's small, and it fit perfectly in our 200 square foot shop. And it's so nice that we have the offline mode, so when the internet does go down, all the data is still stored, and the reports that are given to us are super valuable. One report that we use all the time is the product's mix report. It's so important for me to be able to see that report in the kitchen, so I know exactly what I need to make for the next day. In the next few years, we definitely plan on expanding, and as we grow, we're definitely going to grow with Revel. Welcome back. You're listening to the Chamber of Commerce show with Chris and Tommy. If you want to join our conversations, follow us on Twitter at The Chamber Show. Welcome back, guys. Uh, we're here with uh, Michael Andrade. Uh, Mike. Oh, Michael Andrade. Andrade and <laughs> yeah, Michael Chirco. Yeah. yeah, so thank you for joining us. Uh, wanted to talk about the Downey Chamber of Commerce. So he's, okay, right he's on sit on the board. Oh, he sits on the I'm board? I'm uh, one of the board of directors. Yes. You're one of the board of directors. Yes. He's an ambassador. Yes. Yes. So right. can you guys just explain to us what that means for people who don't understand sure, sure. what a chamber is and what that format is? 
So go ahead. Okay. Danny. So that's that's really interesting. Yes, because we do get the, all these labels, and uh -huh. you're like, okay, what does the director do? What does the executive <laughs> director do? And then what do the ambassadors do? Uh -huh. Right. So the directors do more of kind of setting things up, right? Yes. Kind of the policy of what direction the chamber wants to go in. Mm, right. And then the ambassadors are more the connection between the chamber and everything going on and the community mm -hmm. and the businesses. Right. So we would be the ones that would go visit Moises or we'd go visit other businesses mm -hmm. in the community. Right. So you kind of um, hold their hands and yeah. introduce them to everyone. And hold their hands, give them hugs, <laughs> high fives when things are going good. Yeah. That's good. So, so what do you do there, Michael? Uh, we set up the events, uh, we figure out how to get the community involved. Uh, we go to um, businesses to see if they want to join the chamber. Um, they also do a let's do lunch, we do uh, once uh -huh. a month it is, yeah. uh, where they um, call a restaurant and say, um, can we do a mixer at your restaurant? And then they go and they sit on, on those types of events. Right. Does a restaurant help? With yeah. any of that, or yeah, they, they give a discount. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. And then sometimes even if That's you promoting them, right? right. It Correct. does, yeah. And sometimes even if you decide you uh, want to do a mixer at a certain restaurant, sometimes that restaurant will give a twenty percent uh, donation to your favorite. Okay. Uh, We're well, talking about donations, raffles, and money. I mm -hmm. forgot to mention uh, visit uh, www.thechamberofcommerceshow.com. Enter your email for a chance to win fifty dollars gift certificate to Louis Butcher Shop. And if you're not near the immediate area, we'll send you a Visa gift card. So forgot to mention that when he was here. But definitely, um, I know with these restaurants, so let's say, for example, you guys bring what, depending on the size of the event, 20 to 100 people? Yes. It could wow. be, yeah. So that's big business for them. Mm -hmm. yes. And again, are they especially the chamber members? They better be. Yes, they definitely have to be chamber members. <laughs> okay, okay. But it's really good, especially for new, for new restaurants uh, that open up. The, okay. the community doesn't know yet. They yeah. can invite all the businesses out to taste their food, find out what they're about. So there's a lot of restaurants that I've never been in if, until you go to one of these chamber events. So and then after you go there, you, know, you keep going back and yeah. you bring your friends. Since we started this show, I've been communicating with a lot of different chamber of commerce. And I learned a lot. They all work differently. Mm -hmm. But one thing that you mentioned before the show is that you guys have events with other chambers and you guys get involved. How does that work? Uh, we do partner up a lot with different chambers. So I know we partnered up just recently with Norwalk and we had this really incredible Women in Leadership oh. event that we did just mm -hmm. this week, I think it was. Yeah, and we had a lot of people that came out oh. to it and we had some great speakers and you start meeting people in other cities. That's awesome. So for the lunches, it's really nice because you have it's a little bit smaller group. And it's more people that are in the city. But then as soon as you get introduced to a whole new city and a whole new set of people, you, know, you start making friends over there. You start making connections with them. And I think that's good, too, because I know some of the chambers, I know, like you mentioned, there's a lot of members, but mm -hmm. you kind of see the same faces, right? So when you coordinate with another chamber, you're seeing a lot more faces. So mm -hmm. that kind of makes it a lot larger. So that's pretty neat. I got to go to one of those. Definitely. It does double up, and yeah, sometimes they've done them like four or five chambers wide. So wow. now you get people from all, all over the place. And how long have you been a board member with the chamber? Uh, it's going to be two years. Nice. I've been a member of the chamber, though, eight years. So what's the hardest wow. decision you guys had to vote on? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we don't have any hard decisions. No. It's all fun, right? It's yeah. all funny games, it, really, just planning events. <laughs> um, we have a, a good group of people, mm -hmm. and everybody has a love for the community. So there's not really a hard, uh, we haven't had a hard decision yet. Downey is very, I, I used to work in Pico Rivera. Oh, okay, okay. So we get a lot of people from Downey, mm -hmm. and you guys are very tight. <laughs> it's a, yeah. it's a, the, yeah. the community is very, it's, a, it's right. big. Right. Mm -hmm. It's big, physically it's big, but you guys are really tight. A lot of people know each other, even aside from the chamber. Yeah. Putting the chamber aside, just yeah. a lot of people know each other yeah. in the community. So yeah, it's a very good community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So, um. What is your next event that's coming up? Tell us a little bit about your schedules. We okay. have uh, the we Elf Run. A couple things. Yeah. yeah, we got the Elf Run coming up. Okay, so the Elf Run, this is really exciting. We got two things going on. One is the Downey Chamber Christmas Parade. Okay. So it's actually the Downey Chamber of Commerce that puts the parade together. Sometimes it's the city. This is actually the Downey Chamber of Commerce oh, that puts awesome. it together. That one's going to be on December 2nd. How long is the route? December, it's long. It goes on for days. <laughs> <laughs> it goes down Downey Boulevard. It's a good, it's a good long route. Okay, yeah. Okay. Maybe it's um, a 3K, right? Oh, yeah, for the route. And then right before, so that's in the afternoon, but in the morning at 9 o'clock, we got a 5K annual elf run. Oh, okay. 
And that one's really a, fun. A run? It's, a, it's an actual run. It's a like physical a run. run, 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 run yeah. But it's only five k, so it's not that long. But it's a lot of fun. It's something that we do right before the parade. And you kind of run around the city. Yeah. We get about, I think we get about 400 runners that come out. Oh, wow. Uh-huh. And one of the fun things we got is we have a costume contest. So people do come out. They dress up as elves and Santas, and oh, they're just wow. running down all over the you city. You so. have, like, I know there's a lot of cities that have, like, a small little main street that's very, um, I'm thinking Claremont off the top of my head, where they'll do. do wine tasting. Uh, just because uh-huh. I'm thinking of wine, because I just had two glasses of wine before the show. <laughs> but, you know, they'll go store to store, have glasses of wine. Have you guys mm-hmm. seen that done before? Yeah, we, we do the fairs. Do. We've had a couple of fairs. That yeah, we've, we've had a couple of uh-huh. fairs. There's a, there's a great little gallery in Downey. It's called the Stay Gallery, and sometimes they have wine mm-hmm. and drinks there. We used to have a place called Marie's Wine Bar, but they closed down recently. Mm-hmm. But they were really good as well. Oh, okay, okay. But as far as tastings, no, we don't have anything yet. Uh, so one thing's... Um, that I want to do is we're trying to create a community similar to what you guys do with your surrounding chambers, Mm -hmm. but we want to be able to talk to other chambers that are not just in Southern California, but in other states. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the things that help your chamber acquire new members? I would say uh, the ambassadors, the ambassadors uh, Uh reaching out to the restaurants and people go to the restaurants and they're like, what is this that's going on? And then they want to be involved. Uh, going door to door to each restaurant or to each business mm-hmm. and introducing ourselves. Mm-hmm. That's a big, big part. So I, I think that's what, what uh, sets that's us awesome. apart. Mm-hmm. Awesome. And, you guys, and then being consistent. Any so you do want to do those events. Right. Uh-huh. Any ribbon cutting soon? Any other businesses? We have two shows? ribbon cuttings. I know Daniel's going to kill me because he's got his ribbon cutting on the 20th. <laughs> and then we got, and I don't remember Daniel the... The with the gym. Guy. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. He's got his ribbon cutting coming up on the 20th, and then we also got Job Source. Okay. They were doing the ribbon cutting on the 20th. Okay. And one of the things we do also with the ambassadors is as new chamber members come on, the ambassadors will go and visit. Oh, no. Even if it's not a ribbon oh, cutting, no. we'll go and visit the new members. That's cool. Just to kind of introduce cool. ourselves, let them know that we're here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not just that. When you go to a regular restaurant, when I go to a restaurant or a detail shop or a butcher shop, I always ask them, are you a member of the chamber? And a lot of times they don't know what the chamber is, yeah. but then mm-hmm. I explain it and I tell them they can get more business and yeah. then they join. Yeah, that's definitely one of our goals for this show. We definitely mm-hmm. want to show other people who really don't know what the chamber is or are not a part of the chamber, um, especially for, like I said, a lot of people like Moises that has his shop in Downey. I'm not too far from Downey. I mean, in traffic, I'm like maybe 40 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But just watching that video, it's, it seems like it's worth the drive to go try that meat. Yeah, it, it looked really yeah. fresh, you know, and, and, and that's the point of this is where we don't want to promote just in Downey. We mm-hmm. want to be able to promote across, you know, the city. So, yeah. um, you know, thank you guys for being here as well. I really appreciate you guys being here on our first show. Just thank you. Appreciate it's a really it. good it's, show. It's, yeah. uh, you know, it was uh, definitely an experience <laughs> for us to put this yeah. all together, you know, yeah. and I appreciate you guys taking that risk. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah, and we I do wish you guys that. luck on, yeah, thank you on guys. the shows. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate you guys it. Have appreciate special it. here. Uh, so, how can we find you guys? Uh, it's downychambercommerce.com, I assume, or no? Yeah. They get to be a .org. .org. Oh, uh-huh. Okay, gotcha. yeah. downychamber.org. Okay. And then, uh, so they'll become a member. It, probably the best thing is just to go to those monthly meetings, right? You go to the monthly meetings. Yeah. We have um, we got city affairs events that are going on. You can actually just look up the Downey Chamber of Commerce and see events that we got coming up. Yeah. Um, I know you guys are really good on Facebook. We're guys all are really over Facebook. Good on Twitter. Uh-huh. You guys are really good on Instagram. Yeah, We're learning and a lot there's from this, you guys. Yeah, and there's so many <laughs> resources that you can get through the chamber. Like yeah. I know Moises had mentioned the SBDC, uh-huh. um, and I've actually gone there too, just through the chamber. Okay. That no. you know, hey, this organization is available. Pace is another one that's available. Really great organization for small businesses, uh-huh. and most of these are free and I've resources people, that are available. Um, that were yeah. with Courage Forward. They're, yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. So I, I, we're, we're going to be interviewing them soon, and I okay. think that's really cool because mm-hmm. it's a it's an organization that helps people, service members, yeah. when they come out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we'll learn a lot about them soon too. That's, that's going to be a good one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh-huh. They they help uh, veterans get jobs and then uh, apply them to a mission. Cool. Which okay. is really cool. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, well, again, thanks guys for coming. Is there anything else that you guys want to plug? Anything else that yeah, you guys want to mention? I'd like uh, for the chamber. I'd like to. Uh, uh, show appreciation to the um, 
the girl that takes care of the social media and stuff, Leti Ariaga. Yeah, she's very cool. Letty, yeah. Yeah, she's she really, incredible. She really uh, does a lot. That. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was actually my out note. Uh, yes, uh, definitely. Okay. Thank you to Leti. Yes. Um, she's been a, a big uh, part of the show, I can say, because she did get a few people lined up for us. Um, and like I said, it's it's really hard, especially starting a podcast, vodcast. There's no nothing out there, right. you know. Yeah. So it's not like when I make phone calls, people go in and well, what is it? You know, what I mean? they want to so, look you up right away. Yeah, yeah, so they're gonna see this video, and I'm hoping it's good for them, and it's gonna open more doors, and I hope that they see the value in it too, because like I said, it's not just about Downey. It's not just about the chamber. It's about the businesses and the community. Right. Mm -hmm. and so we definitely appreciate you guys coming out here and, like I said, taking that risk. Definitely. So um, before we go, I just want to make sure I look at my notes because I know I'm missing something. Are we good? Yeah, I think we're good. That's it? Yeah, we're good. All right, that's so it. Thank Thanks you so much. All right, thank you. Thank you, audience. Yeah. Appreciate thank it. Thank you. Thanks again for listening to the Chamber of Commerce show. Join us every week for more valuable information. There's so much to learn. We're building stronger people in the field of business from all industries. This show can transform your business to the next level. And it can help people with minimal business experience to become gurus in a relatively short time. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at The Chamber Show. And don't forget to visit our website for more valuable information at www.thechamberofcommerceshow.com. Calm.